Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we are going to discuss about the recent judgment of the Supreme Court regarding right to privacy. There was a whole team of lawyers fighting the case on behalf of petitioners like Bejwada Wilson and also the most interesting part is there was a team of young lawyers who were doing the research for the entire uh, case, entire petition and we have S. Prasanna with us today, one among those lawyers to discuss the issue. Prasanna, welcome to News Click. So, uh, Let's start with what were you, I mean, how did you get involved with the case as because what I've read from the papers, you were a coder, then you turned into a lawyer. What, how did you get involved with this case? Thank you very much, Pranjal, for having me here. Right, so as you said, I have a computer science engineering background. Uh, so I got interested in the project uh, in around 2010, 2009, 2010, during that time. So I had just moved to Delhi and I had just uh, begun studying law. And uh, because this was a project that seemed to have, see, that seemed to raise important questions of technology and the state's use of technology, I got interested in it. And then uh, I started uh, assisting Dr. Usha Ramnathan, who was also researching on it and writing about it uh, quite heavily. In fact, most of uh, the, I think, first two, three years of writings on, on on this particular project, the UID project was by Dr. Usha Ramnathan and I was fortunate enough to help her with the sum of her work including her submissions to the standing committee in 2011. It was the Ashwan Sinha led uh, parliamentary standing committee that actually rejected the National Identification of Authority of India bill at that time. And then I just stayed on and as counsel uh, in the case uh, after a little bit because I continued to be interested in, in the project and the kind of questions that, uh, that it raised. Okay, so I mean this judgment touches upon various subjects. I mean Aadhaar uh, petition was the one that pushed for this bench. But the judgment touches at various aspects, section 377, marital rape, right to food. So can you throw some light on these subjects? I mean. What, what is the implication of this judgment on these things? See, implication of 377 is fairly direct because uh, majority of judges here have held that the Suresh Kaushal case is clearly a discordant note in our constitutional rights jurisprudence. So 377 case has been all but overruled. It, a curative is still pending before the Supreme Court. Uh, I think it is a matter of course that if the curative is allowed that uh, that the ratio will be overturned and the and the delhi high court's decision to decriminalize consensual 2009. correct 2009 in nas foundation okay. right so so that decision to decriminalize consensual sec, uh, consensual acts of same sex act so that i think will stand after once the curative stands allowed so 377 it has a direct impact so on the right to food case so that so now that because see all of the UID related cases were kind of stalled because of this reference to the larger bench. Now the decks are cleared. Now the larger bench, nine judge bench has decided and therefore now hearings can commence on the full UID case that includes all of these implications for right to food because there is there's a huge exclusion angle to UID for instance. I mean you know that see the project has been marketed as a project of inclusion right so i mean lots of people poor people are not visible to the state now they will become visible to the state etc but now you see all the figures that are put out to justify the project are figures of exclusion see we've saved so much by cancelling so many cards we've saved saved so much by actually denying rations to so many people so i mean even in even in the marketing language the project has shifted from one of inclusion to exclusion but in reality the exclusion there happens at in multiple levels and that will now get foregrounded after uh, the nine judge bench is decided because it's basically decks have been cleared you know the marital rape judgment uh, i i'd wait to see how that pans out i believe uh, there's it's more i think I think the I have not read the petition, but the petition is largely predicated on the equality guarantee rather than the privacy guarantee. So, so, th so therefore, I mean, I'll wait to see. I'll reserve my comments on that before I see the petition and, and the kind of issues that it throws up. Okay, so let's come back to the UID project, the Aadhaar project, because you rightly point out if you look at Rajasthan, uh, the, because the social audit takes place there. 
So you come out with facts where people are not able to get ration cards, Narega wages are not able to, they're not even sanctioning Narega wages. So what do you think what's going to happen with the Aadhaar judgment because that's, that is something which is impacting day-to-day -day lives of thousands of workers across the country, thousands of small-scale policies that is influencing people. It is, I mean, it's, it's actually, uh, UID project has actually caused havoc in many of these social sector schemes. We, we've seen that uh, people have been asked to climb trees to authenticate themselves because there are now point of service machines installed in each of these ration shops in Rajasthan. In Delhi, for example, had about 20 shops or 40 shops that had the point of service machines and then the the Delhi Rosi Roti Adhikar Abhyan and uh, the SNS uh, people have actually documented the kind of problems that are there very well. Similarly, in Rajasthan, we've had, we've had people had to climb trees to get ration. I mean, we this is what because kind of country? Because the network connectivity is not there yeah, for Correct, them. correct. But there is a certain level of dignity that, that uh, we'll have to ensure for all our uh, countrymen and countrywomen, right? And, uh, and it's amazing that in, in this 21st century, we'll have a government telling people to climb trees to get their ration of food, right? These are, no, these are not charity by the government. Right. These are rights, constitutional rights, statutory rights. The NFSA is a statutory right. So right to food is a constitutional right because it's it's important. It's implicit in your right to life and livelihood. And part of the reason is the state saying that see, it is when people go hungry, it is not it is not just people go hungry because of their misfortune. It is because I mean it is it is the Indian state's and especially when constitutional were... duty to ensure that everybody has these basic needs especially when you have right. that word of socialist mentioned after the 42nd amendment it's true see even if even, let's let's say let's say no socialist let's say only liberty was mentioned so what does liberty mean if there is no dignity what does liberty let's assume there is no socialist let's say socialist okay people say okay it was actually added after an amendment which has now been discredited widely etc let's even remove socialist there is a there is a there is a directive principle that says I mean, you need to make sure the, uh, there is no concentration of uh, economic power and resources with a few people. Because you cannot guarantee that, you will have to have these schemes wherein basic needs are at least uh, ensured for the people. And for that, if you, if you actually say, I mean, they'll need to climb trees, they'll need to have baltis and somersaults, and I mean, they'll, today they'll need to give their ration card, tomorrow, tomorrow they'll need to give their Aadhaar card. They lead to authenticate themselves. All kinds of uh, conditions that you want to want to impose for what? For them, for people to actually enjoy basic needs of less, I mean life. I mean this is this is amazing that this is happening in the 21st century. And I hope the Supreme Court uh, and the high courts across the country are able to. Uh, take cognizance of all these problems and come up with a verdict that is appropriate. Huh, because also we are moving fastly towards a, towards a nation and also towards a society where data is becoming very important. So it's also part of that process only this entire UID project, collecting data and giving it to the private players. Yeah. So let's hope uh, and all the best for your future assignments. We hope that this the Aadhaar judgment outrightly rejects the entire UID project. Thanks a lot Prasanna for giving us your time and as these things proceed, we'll be coming back to you on such issues. Thank you Pranjal. Thanks a lot for watching News Click.